I'm Tony Weber, and I'm here at um, Ron Shira's studio, and here, here he is. What age did you start hunting and fishing? Oh, boy. Um, you know, when I was a little boy, maybe four, five, six years old, both my uh, mother and my dad liked to fish on Sunday afternoons, so that was a family thing. That's what we did. And um, I kind of liked it. We would go down to the Mississippi River, fish from shore, no boat, and... Uh, fish for bluegills and uh, with bobbers and um, uh, I became fascinated with watching the bobber go down and you know what I still am what was the biggest fish you ever caught oh boy um, I've caught some hundred pound uh, tarpon and about a hundred and twenty pound marlin not real big when it comes to marlin um, my biggest bass is uh, 14 pounds, largemouth bass. My biggest peacock bass is 15 pounds. My biggest walleye, I've got a couple of them over 10, between 10 and 11 pounds. Um, my biggest smallmouth was uh, 21 inches long. I don't know the weight, that's a big smallmouth. But you know what? Uh, oh, my biggest northern pike has been 50 inches long. But um, I don't have a real big bluegill or a real big crappie. Um, my biggest rainbow trout was 10 pounds. But you know, you know what, Tony? Uh, I like any fish I have on the end of my line. Who were your role models when you were growing up? Well, uh, my dad and mother were um, avid outdoor people. We would, as I mentioned earlier, we would go fishing. Um, in the fall, we'd go hunting uh, walnuts. My dad would uh, take me squirrel hunting. In the spring, we'd go hunting morel mushrooms. You ever eaten a morel mushroom? They're really good. And uh, then my mother's brothers were avid fly fishermen. And I was born and raised in northeast Iowa where there were a lot of trout streams, Mississippi River, a lot of woods. So there were a lot of opportunities for me to uh, enjoy the outdoors. So I would tag along with my uncles to learn fly fishing. And all of those things kind of tweaked my interest. Then I started squirrel hunting as a, as a 12, 13 year old boy and I uh, would go out in the woods by myself and I'd start to see a deer or two. You didn't see deer too often back then, but uh, the whole thing fascinated me and uh, I was the best squirrel hunter in Elma Key County. What is your favorite outdoor memories? I have a lot of them, Tony. Um, one of my favorites, and I have a lot of favorites, but one of my favorites was the day I spent with a man. We went fishing, he ran the boat, he, um, put the minnow on his hook, he cast out, he caught a fish, he took it off his line, he held it up for the camera and he let the fish go and he did it all with no arms. He used his feet to do everything and he was quite an inspiration. So that's one of my favorite memories. Did you train Raven too? I did some of the training on uh, both Ravens that I've had. Um, some of the you know, sitting, healing, and being a nice dog. But uh, a dog trainer named Tom Dockin also deserves some credit. He he introduced uh, Raven to feathers and uh, shotgun sounds and uh, some hunting hand signals, some pretty high-tech uh, hunting stuff. So he gets a lot of credit too. Um, your show, Minnesota Bound, how, how long has that been on the air? We're entering our 11th year. And you know what? We began with a contract that was only for three months. <laughs> so 11 years later we're still going. Has your show an, or won any awards? Yes it has. We've been very fortunate. We have a right over here we have a cabinet full of Emmy Awards and um, we're very proud of those. Some of those are for the show. Some of those are for the talented videographers that we have on our staff and uh, we've won other awards too but uh, those are probably the most prestigious. What's in store for Minnesota Bound? Well, we always strive to find better stories, more interesting stories, or do them uh, more interestingly. There's a wonderful world out there that we haven't explored at all. We're, we ourselves are working on improving our underwater capabilities. There are other stories about critters that are more difficult to do that we're trying to do. And uh, we still haven't completed the ultimate outdoor story yet and we're still looking for it.
When people look at your career, how would you like to be remembered? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I'm not that anxious to look at my tombstone, Tony. <laughs> but uh, how would I like to be remembered? I guess I'd like to be remembered as a, uh, a man who told stories about the outdoors that uh, helped people appreciate and uh, preserve the outdoors. Could you tell us a few things about your office, around your office? Sure. We have to start with the star of the show, however. Here's the star of the show. A few years ago, Raven with her first and only litter of puppies. And um, this picture, we tried to get this picture of all the puppies inside the crate, but they wouldn't stay in there <laughs> long enough for the cameraman to take a picture because uh, they were nursing and they saw their mother laying there and that was a big signal for them to get over the wall to get to mother. And so that's the picture that you see there. And um, one of them, she had seven puppies. One of them, of course, now is her successor and the new star of the show. And over here, we have some, some of the uh, awards that we're very proud of over the years and some mementos and pictures of, of things that uh, we've done. You ask about uh, some of the awards we had. These are the regional Emmys that we've won. And uh, as I said, some are for the show, some are for the great talented videographers we have. And uh, so we're very proud of those as well. Let's see, we have uh, Jack Lemon over here. I, I went fishing with him one time. Remember the famous movie star? Yes, this is when they were doing Grumpy Old Men. I fished with Jack. He was a, a wonderful companion. Uh, quiet, you would think he'd be the life of the party, but uh, he was a quiet guy. And uh, this uh, rock and roll star here, uh, Ted Nugent, we uh, spent a couple days with and in his home, and we did some stories on him. He's a very interesting guy. Uh, and I got to say, I didn't start out as a Ted Nugent fan. But after talking to him, and I mean, he's kind of in your face, but I learned to appreciate uh, what he's trying to do. And number 14 for uh, the, the uh, Minnesota Wild, he's now left us, but uh, uh, Darby, that's the man with the world record whitetail. It was a world record, it's been since replaced. And this was an Olympic shooting champion here that we had the pleasure of meeting. So we have, uh, 11 employees working here in two different office suites and um, we produce a lot of television not just minnesota bound we produce a show called backroads on espn and outdoor life network and uh, we produce some atv shows for alert publishing as well that are on the outdoor channel and the outdoor life network there's anything else that you'd like to share well tony i'm i'm a little nervous sitting here because are you after my job? <laughs> I just enjoy watching you. Great. I appreciate that, too. Thank you for coming and seeing us. I'm Kayla Edge reporting for KGFW, and this is... Steve Plummer. Could you tell us a little bit about your job with Ron Shera? Sure, I'm a videographer where I go out and shoot the stories, and then I come back into uh, to the edit room and put them together, and then they make the air. What are one of your favorite memories from working with the show? I have a lot of good memories. We get to, to shoot outdoor television, so we're in, the, in nature a lot. I did have a television show that I did in, in Nebraska where I shot sandhill cranes and slept overnight in a blind uh, to get the video of them, and that was, that was a lot of fun. What's one of the hardest parts about video editing? I think being happy with the final outcome of the story. There's uh, so many different ways you can edit and put a story together, uh, and a lot of people see it a lot of different ways. So finally deciding on, on the final product, I guess, is one of the hardest things. This is what uh, one of our cameras looks like. Very similar. They didn't get much smaller for us, and that's because they need to have the, the lenses here real big so we can zoom in real far and the tapes go in here. Just What's the big difference between my camera? Well, there isn't a lot of difference nowadays because they make a really nice camera for uh, these type of cameras. But uh, this one 
has a little more, uh, has a few more computer chips in it that make the picture a little sharper. What are all these tapes for? Well, all these tapes actually have all the little critters and the nature scenes and all the stories that Ron tells all on these tapes and we keep them all because uh, it's not often you get a chance to get some, say a moose or something like that. We don't want to tape over it so we keep them all on file and then we can go back to them later. Where does a lot of the music come from from the show? Well, the Minnesota Bound music is actually uh, composed by someone that we had uh, 10 years ago when this show started. That's where most of the music came from. But for the individual stories, there's a music library company where they have uh, CDs of a lot of different kinds of music. And we use those and make uh, add them to the, the individual segments uh, as we see fit. And, and that's where the music comes from. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Well, it's a lot of fun and uh, a, a neat uh, profession to get into, and I really enjoy it. And I, I'm surrounded by a lot of other folks who enjoy it, too. Thanks for being here, and good luck with all that you're doing. Thank you. I'm Morgan Piaski, and I'm reporting for KGFW, and this is... Don Stremsky. What are your duties with Minnesota Bound? Uh, I do technical support services. I do closed captioning. I log the incoming raw videotapes. Uh, Steve there, who you just met, for example, will go out, shoot a story, uh, and he'll collect, you know, four hours of video for a, for a two-minute story. And it's generally my job to sit down and go through those tapes and pick out the good stuff. What exactly is closed captioning? Uh, closed captioning is a system by which uh, hearing impaired people uh, can watch our show and, well, basically read it like you would hear it. I go through it, I transcribe the show, I mark it, and then I roll it out to tape or put it on a disc to feed into the editing computers. Wow, that's amazing. How did you learn how to do this, all this stuff? Uh, actually, when I was about your age, I started doing public access uh, with Northern Dakota County Cable Commission, NDC4. Uh, thank you, Jody Miller. And just developed an interest from there. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. Just stick with it, kid. You've got talent. Thank you. We're, we're done here at Ron's Enterprises. We're going to go get some meat. Don't adjust your TVs. We're using Night Child on the camera. It's really early in the morning. Let's go find TJ and Lisa. We're live here today at KYSM and we're going to be interviewing Lisa and TJ. We're welcoming guests to the studio with us this morning. We've got some folks from KGSW, which is Gibbon Fairfax Winthrop. And, uh, is it a television station in the school? Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't we have you guys... Well, turn your mic on and we'll have you introduce yourselves. What's your name? Morgan. Morgan. All right. What grade are you in, Morgan? Fourth. All right. Thanks for coming. Who's next? What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. You're in fourth grade, too? Yep. All right. And next? Ashley. Ashley. Also fourth grade. Ashley, I like your cowboy hat. It's mine. Mor oh, it's Morgan's hat, but she's letting you wear it. Okay. We have two hats. Oh, she's okay. got her own hat. I like hats. both of your hats. They came prepared. You can't come to the country much. club without a hat. <laughs> so, right, you know? so what are you guys doing with KGFW TV? What do you guys do? We well, interview people. You interview people. So you're here today to interview so you're us? you're making a TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, where does this show? Does it show at your school? It shows on, on channel TV. 7 and 8. And is that the uh, cable access, the public ac yep. access channels in, in uh, yep. Sibley County, am I correct when I say that? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to get into our birthdays now. And Kevin, hang around because you need to be a part of this. The Birthday Club is brought to you by Mexican Village. Kevin, step up to the microphone again. Whose birthday is it in your family today? My grandma, Kathy Tarlseth. All right. And do you know how old she is? No. That's okay. She doesn't <laughs> want me to say it on the radio anyway. Where does she live? She lives in Gibbon, Minnesota. Okay, and that's a birthday wish from you, and do you have a sister? Mm-hmm. What's her name? Carrie. All right, from Kevin and Carrie. Those are the local folks celebrating. Thanks, Kevin. Here's Lisa with Celebrities. Oh, happy birthday, Elaine Stritch. The in between commercials, we're going to try to ask TJ and Lisa a few questions. What inspired you to be on the radio? Well, I didn't start out wanting to be a DJ, but uh, once I was in college, I had an internship, and I interned at a radio station, and I saw how much fun it was, and how much, how many fun things you get to do, so I decided this is what I wanted to do. So it's just a really fun job. What inspired you, TJ? 
you know, I don't know. I wasn't really a, 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 a set out to go and be in radio at first either. I was kind of, I was going to school. I didn't know what I wanted to go and be when I grew up, so to speak. And uh, I got into broadcast school and I was originally just going to be a salesman. I figured I'd just go out and sell and try to make some money. And when I got into it, I realized, hey, being on the radio is a lot of fun. It's kind of like going to work and playing. So yeah. I've been doing it ever since. Hi, I'm Ashley Jackson. I'm going to be helping Morgan interview today. We're here with TJ, and TJ, I have a couple questions to ask you. Um, who were your role models when you were growing up? When I was growing up, my role models were, well, my dad is a role model. You know, there's things I like about my dad, and, you know, then when every time as I get older and I meet him, I notice there's a, th a lot of things that me and my dad are alike, uh, categories we're alike in, and some of those are good and some of those are not so good. But uh, my dad has always been a role model, and when I was growing up, we did a lot of racing. My dad had a race car, so we were at the drag strip all the time. So I was always thought I'd be in, in racing when I grew up, and I didn't quite end up there, but a lot of race drivers were role models for me when I was growing up, too. And uh, there really was nobody in the radio business for me that I looked forward to because I didn't know I was going to end up here. Okay, Lisa, who are some of the famous people that you have met on the radio? I've been doing this for about 10, 11 years now. We've met, um, well, we got to interview Loretta Lynn, and she's a famous old country singer. So uh, I don't know if you guys know who that is or not, but that was pretty neat. We've, we've met folks like Alan Jackson and George Strait and Brad Paisley and Kenny Chesney and Tim McGraw, and I could go on and on, TJ. So many people. A lot of the country artists we have met, but I think for me, every, every uh, summer is when Vikings training camp comes to town and we get the opportunity to be a part of that because I'm a big Vikings fan, win or lose lose or lose and uh, and so yeah the opportunity to sometimes get to meet the coaches and players is a big thing for me as well we met Jared from Subway too yeah we did and his giant pants and his giant pants he was in town we <laughs> met him when he was here as well so I get a chance to meet some of those guys what are some of the jobs that you had before you worked at KYSM? <laughs> uh, that we might have to save for the next segment for me because yeah. it can, I can go on and on and on but uh, if you want to touch on it a little too. bit Lisa uh, what you know what I used to work in the bridal industry I used to sell diamonds I used to, what else did I do? I worked at, um, you know, when I was 15, I had a job at a sandwich shop in my town. Um, I've done babysitting, lots of things. Lots of different things. I'll just run through them quick here. I'll try not to tell a long story. I was also a sandwich artist. I worked at a Subway store. Uh, I once was Arnie the Armor Hot Dog. <laughs> and I walked, around, I walked around grocery stores in a big hot dog costume and handed out coupons. Nice. Um, I've delivered pizzas before. What else have I done really embarrassing? Uh, I washed golf carts. That wasn't embarrassing, but when my first job ever, I washed golf carts and emptied garbages. The armor hot dog thing is the best. Yeah, that's pretty much the icing on the cake. Yeah, for a summer, I, wa I wandered around grocery stores dressed as a giant hot dog, scaring kids and handing out coupons. <laughs> <laughs> Were you shy when you first went on air? Kind of nervous, yeah. I think I still have that uh, tape of that show. Of your first time on the air ever? Of my first time on the air ever, which was a long time ago, and it was brutally bad. I have my first time. It was at the point where I had to write everything down that I was going to say mm -hmm. and read it, and it sounded just like I was reading everything, instead of just going on and, and being yourself and talking. But that's something that you learn how to do the long I don't know if I was as shy as I was just nervous. Yeah. You know, the first time ever being live and, and realizing, oh my gosh, people are actually listen listening. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know about you, TJ, when I was their age... I was very shy in school. I was one of those really quiet kids. Sure, sure. I, don't, I wasn't super quiet, but I, uh, uh, I was, it, you know, speaking in front of people was certainly a nerve-wracking experience. You get past it. I don't it, know what though. happened. Not <laughs> that yeah. Um, no, this one's for you, TJ. Okay. What do you do in your free time? Well, I have a, a well, almost two-year-old daughter, so a lot of my free time these days is spent playing with her and spending time with her. Uh, when I do get a break for some, some alone time just by myself. I love to go golfing. Uh, I like to go to sporting events, Minnesota Vikings, Timberwolves, Maverick hockey, Maverick basketball, stuff like that. Uh, so I do like to, to uh, take part in, I like to try to play sports too. I'm not that great at it, but sometimes I'll play softball or volleyball. But golfing is pretty much the big one for me. I talk about that quite a bit during the summer. Even right now, or the first day you're doing this, is it confusing learning how to be on the radio? It can be, yeah. Um, a lot of our listeners know that we recently went through a studio remodeling. Uh, we got a brand new studio and it, with it came brand new equipment that we had never used before. Mm -hmm. So anytime you get something new, 
Uh, it can be nerve-wracking, frustrating, uh, a little scary at times and to figure out how to use it. You're doing it for so many people. Too, right. And then, but we made mistakes and we make mistakes on the air and people understand that we're regular people, so we appreciate that. This is for TJ and Lisa. What is your favorite singer? And what's your favorite fr song from your favorite singer? Oh, well, if you're talking about country music, I love Martina McBride and I love Trisha Yearwood. It's kind of a toss-up. I love anything by Martina McBride, so um, her Greatest Hits album is one of my favorites. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song from her? Oh, my goodness. I probably like her first uh, song, My Baby Loves Me, That uh, and, and I like the song Valentine, too. Valentine's Day is coming up. Yeah, so it's kind of a tie. What's your favorite singer and what's your favorite song from your favorite oh, singer? Oh boy, I guess if we're talking country music, I like Alan Jackson and Brad Paisley and Hank Williams Jr. It's hard to pinpoint one specific, but I really like Hank Jr. I like A Country Boy Can Survive. Uh, some of that classic country stuff I really enjoy. Um, I'm also a blues and rock and roll guy, and B.B. King is one of my favorite, and The Grateful Dead are some of my favorites too. I have a lot of their albums, so I... Uh, I, I just can't tell you what my favorite song is because there are so many songs that I like. I like a lot of different kinds of music. Well, that pretty much wraps up our interviews for today. Is there anything else you guys would like to share with us? Well, we want to thank you for coming out. We had a lot of fun having you guys here in the studio. It's nice to have guests. Thank you. Thanks for having us on the air today. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? Well, thank you guys for coming out. We really enjoyed having you guys here. Do you guys think this is something you would like to do when you guys get older? Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a little bit of fun. Well, thanks for coming out, and we hope that everybody watching tunes into Country 103.5. Thank you so much. I think Kevin has one more question for both of you. What's your favorite TV show? What is my favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is KGFW TV. I like The Apprentice, and then I'll watch KGFW TV as well. KGFW episode lucky number 13 for us, Lisa. Premieres February 19th, Sibley County Public Access Channel 7. The show will include a segment with Minnesota Bounds' Ron Shera as well, among some other neat segments in there. So check it out if you get the opportunity. If you have uh, the Sibley County Public Access channels, um, you'll be able to see that. And again, thanks for coming in, guys. You provided a lift to our day that we don't always get. Hi, I'm Morgan, reporting for KGFW, and this is... Terry Cooley. What is your job here at the studio? Well, I'm an operations manager, which means that uh, things that go on on the radio station kind of fall under my deal, and then I do the afternoons on Country 103, which is my most fun part of the day, by the way. Is there anything about the radio industry that you think is very interesting? I like everything. I like going out and meeting the people, our um, personalities like TJ and Lisa, going on and doing shows, uh, any number of special events I get to go to that normally if I was just uh, doing another job, I'd never get to go to the concerts and, yeah. and all of those fun things and meet those people. But uh, by and large, just uh, being on the air, meeting the people, being around the station personnel is a lot of fun for me. Do you get into the concerts like Alan Jackson free? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, if, if they let us in, we'll come in for free, and uh, usually when we get a show into town, the radio station promotes it, so um, we're, we're, we're around there doing our various duties while the concert's going on and people are having fun. What's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, man. Is it me getting that little horse in a cowboy hat, or is it me... Um, getting my first car. I think getting my first car was a lot of fun, but camping with my folks, I really remember that. I had a lot of fun doing that. We used to camp and go outdoors a lot, so I really enjoy um, the outdoors. I'm from up north, uh, and uh, we tend to like the lakes and the woods and things like that, so doing that as a kid was a lot of fun with my folks and my brother. Anything else you'd like to share with us? I think your, your TV station's the best ever, and you need more power get the school to get you some more power this is a fun class and I'm, I'm glad you guys could show up I wish I would have had something like this when I was a kid I could have been a well maybe not a big star but <laughs> I could have had some cool t-shirts for sure thanks a lot thank you guys go right. no. thanks a lot country 103 bye gotta go back to school hi I'm Allie here to be put in for KGFW and we're going to interview theater. Here we are with the theater director. Hi, I'm Sue O'Neill from GFW. Can you tell us what theater is? Sure. 
Well, theater is a combination of speech and actions, costumes, and a set all put together, and it is designed to entertain an audience and either um, perform something that has a message that may be sad, or it may be funny, or it just may be serious in some way. When did you first become interested in theater? Well, my mom says it started when I was a little tiny baby and I always acted to get attention. And I kind of grew up in a family that is known to be actors and actresses in some way. Um, I was involved in theater in high school and in college. And then when I went back to get my teaching degree and got hired here, they had asked me if I would be willing to start a program back up. And because it meant so much to me when I was in school, I said, absolutely, I would love to start up a theater program. What's the play about? Well the play that we did for contest this year and we're continuing on because this weekend is going to be our sections is called Of Winners, Losers and Games and it's a fantasy play that takes emotions that we have and turns them into characters so we have winner as a character and we have loser as a character and we have hate, anger, greed and war as well as we have peace and patience, compassion and love. And it just shows how everything that happens to us in our life, we battle through these emotions and only by pulling ourselves through and using love can we get through on the happy side or the winning side of life. Who decorated your stage? Well, I have two students, Carissa and Savannah. Come out here, please. How long did it take to make this? How long did it take? Many, many gruesome hours yeah. of back breaking labor yeah <laughs> forever it just never quits we, never we're still painting <laughs> oh they're taping <laughs> that's pretty impressive <laughs> We have a lot of people doing a lot of work, and it looks like a crazy thing back there. We have Adam Nosbush. Adam is our tech person, and we use a PowerPoint. We use a PowerPoint presentation to open the show and close the show. So Adam helps run that, and actually, Adam does anything that we ask him to do. He helps on every part. Philip, who also plays Greed, well, I'll let Philip explain really quickly what he does with all the tech stuff. All right, there's a PowerPoint and um, iMovie production that kind of opens the show and closes the show. And we took pictures and put them in um, so that it was like a slideshow and we added music to it so that um, the show had more of an ending and a beginning to it. And then I also do whatever else is needed around the set. You're going to be on TV. Okay. What do you do? I help build the set. Is it hard work? Depends on the day. How do you learn to talk like that? Here's a practice. And of course, the most important person behind the scenes is Ashley Woods. I really don't do all that much. I just do everything that Ms. Lemuel asked me to do and everything that I have to do behind the scenes. This is Summer Covell. Say hi, Summer. Hi. Tell them a little bit about what you do. I run all the lights. That's not just it. She makes it sound easy. She has to program the board. She has to set up the spotlight. And for the dinner theater, they actually have to set everything up in the big gym. What's this set made of? Well, you might find this hard to believe, but it's actually styrofoam insulation panels. And so it's kind of delicate that's why we have chips once in a while, but it's very light. We can fold it and we can mold it into any shape that we want. How do you get over stage fright? Uh, because of, uh, cause if we don't, Ms. O'Neill will get mad. Okay. Uh, for me, um, I'm really nervous before I go out on stage, but then when I'm out on stage, uh, I'm not nervous anymore. And Ms. O'Neill will get mad if, you, if you're afraid, so yeah. <laughs> just be careful. I'm not crazy! You've said enough! Uh... Um, um, um. I think he still has it. How do you get over stage fright? What stage fright? I usually get over stage fright just by saying my first line, and then just being on stage feels natural and you get into character. I don't have stage fright. Okay. Well, uh, as you can see, I have three pretty odd brothers so I know I'm not gonna look the dumbest out there <laughs> by the time we're done practicing this thing we know it so well that you're usually not scared because you're not scared about making mistakes because you know it like the back of your hand so I usually don't get stage fright any by the time here's the one act play second place plaque they're all a bunch of really good actors 
Colton Jackie signing off. One last thing, she's my mom. <laughs> I also have a little brother. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mom. You've been a big help for letting us do this. Yeah, pretty much. You're welcome. And if you need help on your other assignments, just let me know. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks for watching KGFW, and I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> I want to say a quick thank you to Printware Graphics. They made our shirt. You're very welcome. I'm just happy we could help you guys out with that. And it was nice of you to stop in and see us. Where are you guys located? We're in New Ulm.